Hello everyone, I'm doing this devotion from my vacation. Uh, my husband and I are still in Florida. We came down to Orlando, we drove, uh, because that would uh, keep us from having to fly, right? Uh, so driving with four boys in the car is a little bit of a challenge, I will say. I'm not such a fan of it. <laughs> For 20 hours, um, God gave me patience. Um, so uh, I wanted to do this devotion on a beach, but um, there were so many people, it was so loud, there was just, it just wasn't going to happen. So uh, we went from, we took the kids, you know, to Universal Studios, then we did a little tour down, we went to Merritt Island and, you know, saw um, Cape Canaveral and everything, and then um, went to St. Augustine. My husband used to live there years and years ago. And then one of his best friends lives in Jacksonville. So we are now at his friend's house and this is their backyard. They have this lovely backyard with a pool. So I thought, uh, what a better, there's not a better place to do this than right here. So, and of course, as soon as I started this, um, someone decided to weed eat. So I'm hoping that I can talk loud enough over that. I don't know, I'm gonna try. But, um, anyway, so, I have here, um, the devotional, um, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, and this is a classic devotional. It's been around a long, long time. Tons of people know about it, and the way that she wrote this devotional is, um, was as if Jesus is talking to you personally. So here on the back of this, it says, um, and the subtitle, by the way, is Enjoying Peace in His Presence. And that really goes along with the Fruit of the Spirit um, series that I'm kind of doing right now. I'm doing Peace is the latest one that I just did. So this kind of goes along with this. It says, experience peace in the presence of the Savior who is closer than you can imagine. So we were talking about having that inner peace. And that peace comes from the presence of the Savior. So uh, this is going to be perfect to go hand in hand with that. Uh, you know, I contemplated doing this in the pool at that little table right there. <laughs> I thought, oh, I can sit in the pool and just read there and everything, but that would have required me to get in a bathing suit, so that was not going to happen. And then I thought, oh, there's a hammock. The kids have been loving this hammock. Uh, but lest I fall out of that, I figured that was not such a great idea either. Um, because who's going to hold the camera for me? So here I am. This is about as good as it's going to get. Um, but, so on the back of this it says, um, A rich relationship with Jesus is so much more than presenting him with a list of requests. and includes listening through reading the Bible and receiving what he is putting in your heart. The number one best-selling 365-day devotional Jesus Calling is written as if Jesus himself is speaking directly to you. Words of encouragement, comfort, and reassurance of his unending love. In this devotional, Sarah Young shares her own prayer journal with you. These writings are personal reflections based on Jesus' own words of hope, guidance, and peace within scripture penned by one who loves him and reveres his word. As you experience the devotions and the fresh look at scripture, you will look forward to your time with him. Listen to what the Savior is laying on your heart and savor the presence of the one who will never leave you. <clears throat> so I'm reading June 21st, although today is the 22nd. Um, I had picked ye uh, yesterday's as the one that I was going to do. And I thought I'll do it in St. Augustine over at the harbor there where it's really beautiful with the bridge and everything. But we kind of got rained out so that didn't work. <clears throat> but you can just picture it. It would have been lovely. <laughs> so June 21st, it says, wait patiently with me while I bless you. So remember the way that she wants you to read this is as if Jesus is speaking directly to you. Wait patiently with me while I bless you. Don't rush into my presence with time consciousness gnawing at your mind. I dwell in timelessness. I am, I was, I always will be. 
for you, time is a protection. You're a frail creature who can handle only 24-hour segments of life. Time can also be a tyrant, ticking away relentlessly in your mind. Learn to master time or it will be your master. Though you are a time-bound creature, seek to me, seek to meet me in timelessness. As you focus on my presence, the demands of time and tasks will diminish. I will bless you and keep you, making my face shine upon you graciously, giving you peace. So it's just a little tidbit. So if you, you know, if you wake up one day and you think, I don't know what scripture to read, I don't, I don't know how to pray, these are great because it you open it up to that day and just you can you can get a little golden nugget, you know, a little treasure that um, God can speak to you through. He can speak to you through this devotional. I mean, you just can read it a couple of times and then it gives three scriptures. So you end up reading it, looking up those scriptures. You know, there's lots of ways that you can immerse yourself. Um, you can do a 365 day reading of the Bible or go ahead and make sure that you read this every day. And it'll be a guide. So if you don't know what to do and you don't know what to look up or whatever, get get a tool. Use this. You know, there's lots of tools. And um, I have here today my little tiny uh, amplified Bible that I brought with me because, of course, I have the Bible on my phone. Um, the Bible that the church that I go to, Life Church in Oklahoma, developed that app. It's... Um, the U version app and um, so you can get the Bible in any language any version that you prefer and I have that on my phone but obviously I can't use it because I'm filming on my phone so I'm glad I brought my little amplified here and I've told you before what the amplified is about so it's a good version of the Bible to read um, so this gives you three verses. So first one, it, it has Micah 7:7, 7, 7, Revelation 1:8, and Numbers 6:24. So we're going to read those. So Micah 7:7 7, 7 says, "But as for me, I will look to the Lord, and confident in Him, I will keep watch. I will wait with hope and expect expectancy for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me." So the reason I think that He's saying in here. Um, don't or or you know these are her this is her journal but and in her mind this is how god you know wants us to view it don't rush into his presence with time consciousness gnawing at your mind so god is outside of time so if you can imagine that i know it's really hard to imagine that he is not inside time so he can see you know the entire timeline from beginning to end of anything um, the world your life um, everything so he's looking at it from outside he's not in time so he is not bound by all those constraints so you know we want things in our timing and we want them now and yesterday and everything um, but God operates on a whole different level than we do so, he understands our time, but he doesn't have to go by our time. And uh, so, when you go into his presence, you don't want to have uh, that constraint on you. Just be patient. You know, he's, he's trying to get us outside of ourselves to where we can just be, uh, we, we can listen. You know, we can talk to him. We can listen. And we're not on a timeline. You know, um, it, it's nice, you know, those times when you get to hang out with a friend, kind of like my husband is doing right now, it's nice when there's no time constraint and there's no timeline. You just take time, you know, um, you relax, you're sitting together, and you can just converse and be at peace about it and not be worried and harried about well, I only have an hour, you know, or I only have 10 minutes or 30 minutes. And those are the best times whenever you can just hang out together. And that's kind of what God is saying to us in this. Hang out with me. In other words, don't put me always on a timeline. Well, God, I need you to speak right this second, you know. He wants us to be in his presence. He wants us to be friends with him. He wants us to 
um, have a relationship just like you would any other relationship. So in other words, hang out with me and partake and let's have a give and take. You listen to me, I'll listen to you, etc. Just like a real relationship. So that's what he's saying. He's like, I'm outside of time, you're in time. So just don't think about that right now and just be with me, basically, is what he's saying. Um, and that we are bound by time and he is not. So focus on his presence and not the time. And you know, even as, as, as small of a little two paragraphs that this is, you can get a lot out of it. And then especially if you read the scriptures that go with it. So we read Micah, let's read Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, he who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty, the ruler of all. So it may be hard to believe, but, you know, God says, I am. In other words, I always was, I am now, I always will be. So it's hard for us with our finite minds to understand that concept because we live in time. And everything has a beginning and an end as far as we know it. But God doesn't have a beginning and an end. He says he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. So these are concepts that we're not going to fully understand until we get up there with him. And these are things that we just know that are. We accept them. We, we have faith in knowing that, that um, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And that we are thinking uh, about these things with a finite mind and bound by time. So God does not have a finite mind and he is not bound by time. So let's give him that. Okay, so number 624. Let's read that. And you know what is so cool? I think that's one of the scriptures I read in the peace study. So let's see. The Lord bless you and watch, guard, and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon and enlighten you and be gracious, kind, merciful, and giving favor to you. The Lord lift, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, tranquility of heart, and life continually. And that is a scripture that a lot of ministers use at the end of their sermon or the end of their talk. Even at funerals, I've heard this used where... It's like a blessing. You know, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So the minister is saying, let the Lord look upon you and give you peace. And what I was saying in the peace um, video is that it can only come from God, can only come through Jesus. And that is why we need to have this relationship because it's through the presence of his presence and the time that we spend with him that all of these gifts come so we give him we give him time to be with us and um, get to know us and us get to know him we give him that and without the time constraints and God will look upon us he will he I mean imagine that God looking upon us uh, with his countenance looking upon us and giving us peace. I mean, that's a pretty loaded statement. That is a pretty cool statement that God will look upon us and give us peace. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm saying that right. 620. The Lord bless you and watch, guard, and keep you. Make his face to shine upon and light you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So for the Lord to lift his countenance upon me, that is a great honor. That is, um, you know, I can only hope that God would do that. And he will do it for anyone. He loves all of his children. He loves everyone. Not everyone loves him. And uh, so... I hope that this will give you an idea of what you can do um, whenever you, you know, you may be in a rut or you may be um, at a place where you're kind of stuck. We all get there. 
pull out a devotional, you know, uh, get some of these tools to help you through those times. I mean, they certainly have helped me. And as I said, I don't use devotionals every day, but on a trip like this, a devotional is perfect for me. And, um, and it really gives me that little tid tidbit, even though, cause I'm away from home and I don't have all my prayer time and stuff the way that I normally would. And it is just awesome. It's amazing that we can do that. So I pray for each one of you that you are, are asking the Holy Spirit to help you with these fruits of the Spirit. And I will be home in a few days and we will start looking at the rest of the fruits and um, see what else um, I can do, what other videos uh, I can come up with for next week. So you guys are awesome. Keep the faith. That is my message to you. Keep the faith and stand firm and stand strong. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.